Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about creating the life you want. I'm Lady Bounce. And I am Picket Fence. Let me hit you with the mindfulness minute. Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Word up. Short and simple. Let me let me let me break them off with another one. Okay. Man is what he believes. I think those two go together real well. Real I well. think I think so. If you you create the life you want, man has the ability to create himself or herself in the image by which you want to be known for. So, yeah, I, I definitely say that they will go together. Definitely, definitely. So, what life do you want to create or have you created the life that you want to be? Um, In some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. Um, my my family life is, is the life that I've created and, and it's definitely a life that I want. When it relates to my career, I have a life and a career that I've created, but it could be better. Like I could, mm. I could see myself reaching a higher height or going to a different level, maybe even being at a, a different place, even a whole different state, doing something still in the field of education, but completely different from what I'm doing now. So I'm working on creating that kind of life by, you know, getting these other certifications and degrees and knowledge so that I can you know create that what about you um I think we've talked about it before I'm kind of like um in the middle stages of you know career you know the pandemic came and it basically wiped out I had two different jobs and it basically wiped out both of those jobs I haven't been called back to either one of those jobs um one of those jobs was transportation um, of people who had disabilities to their work or either to adult daycares. The other was a dream job of working in a music store. Um, because of the pandemic, even though the music store is open back up, the hours are cut. They're not open as late as we used to be. Um, the first job, the transportation job, a lot of those people have not been called back to work. I'm not sure why. I know there's a thing with um, them being vaccinated and some of them working in real closed facilities. So I find myself, um, I guess what they call a middle-aged person or almost middle-aged, in between careers. Yes, I have a degree in video production and sound engineering, uh, certification in natural health consultant, which coincides coincides with the show we're not getting paid <laughs> we ain't getting paid so uh, drop that donation on PayPal or become a patron today uh, <laughs> so that my answer would be no I'm kind of like in the, um, come to the middle of the road as they say uh, so I'm you know trying to re enter the workforce and trying to figure out you know what would be the best opportunity as well as being financially beneficial for us you know what mm. I mean? okay so what advice since you're going through it yourself what advice could you give somebody else who may find themselves in a similar position either from the pandemic or just losing a job in general or just trying to switch it up and change careers I think that you have to take the time and think about, um, one, what have you always had a passion for? What have you always dreamed of doing? Also, you have to um, weigh out the things that you do, that you like. What kind of things did you like? Do you like kids? You might want to think about entering a field of education. Even if you don't have the degree, you could start off as either a bus driver they'll train you to drive a bus or you might start off as a para which is a what we used to call a teacher's aide um if you like um the culinary arts you might start working at 
it may not seem great, but you might start working at a, a, a Red Lobster or Red Robin being a line cook until you're able to get enough money to go to culinary arts school. So you just have to um, sit down, think about the things that bring you joy. Because that is one thing with the workforce. A lot of us chase money in the workforce. I had a decent job working um, for the cable company for many, many years, 13 and a half, almost 14 years. I hated that job. It brought stress, it brought stress to my mind, my body and my spirit. So when my job was outsourced, I was down because of losing the money, but I was happy to be relieved of the stress. So especially if you're somebody of like my age, or even if you're younger, I think that we need to start teaching younger people to really go after things that not only bring you money, but bring you satisfaction, joy, and happiness. Are you gonna be happy with this job? Are you just working this job for the money? Which money is great, it allows you to do a lot of things, but you have to weigh out, is the stress worth it? Are you able to find a job that will help you pay your bills for less of the stress? But also, I th the reason I think we should start early is because if we really map out um, a kid who's a, a junior, a sophomore or junior going into his senior year, what if we really do those, um, what do you call them, career tests, along with asking them what kind of things you want to do? Now let's try to map out a way that you can do that. Even if it's not a lot of money, let's talk about multiple streams of income so that you can do your dream job and maybe have some other streams of income doing other things to make up for the not making a lot of money at your dream job. Hmm. That's, a, that's a very interesting way to look at it. Um, as far as you know concrete steps i definitely you know like the concrete steps that you gave because when we when we talk to people about things that's one of the things that we want to make sure that we're doing it's not making it seem like it's all rainbows and butterflies and i just woke up one day into this million dollar house or this million dollar position you know so giving people those concrete steps do this do that look into this i think that's really really important we especially, um, I especially like what you said about doing it for our youth. One of the first things that I do when I meet my students for the year is I give them a career interest survey. And it's based on the 16 clusters of careers. So within each cluster of careers, there's eight or nine different careers that they may be interested in based on their interest and their answers to the survey. So I find that in doing that, it helps me to guide them during the school year about, you know, looking in at trade schools or if you're interested in college or what is another way that you could do this job without going to school if you're not a person who is a school person. College isn't for everybody. Trade school, even for that matter, isn't necessarily for everybody. So I definitely use it for that. And I use it for um, when I'm teaching them how to write a resume. If you were going to get a job in this particular field this is what your resume should look like or these are the things that you should have on your resume these are those buzzwords that everybody is looking for you know to be on your resume if you want a job in this field um so i, I definitely like that and and for me personally i know what i want to do in the field of education even coming out of the day-to-day -day operations of being in the classroom I know what I want to do and I'm taking the steps to do that. I'm trying to get the money together. That That is the, the bigger issue is this other degree that I want is going to cost money. And until I find a, a free way or a way to, you know, get it on my personality, then I'm just kind of <laughs> taking some classes and taking some certifications in between and hoping that maybe when I get to that point, because I have all of these other certifications under my belt, that they can knock out some of the classes that I will have to take, which of course would then make it cheaper, you know, to get said degree because I've already got some classes already done, you know, out of my out of my way and everything. So yeah, that's that's definitely important 
if you find yourself, you know, having to get another job after having a job or having to start a new career, you, you got to do some soul searching and figure out what you really want, what you really like. Definitely, definitely. I think that is um, real important. You have to, and like I said, you have to weigh out the, the stress of the job. I mean, I'm at a point where, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm nearing 50. I worked in corporate America for a long time. And then I, I seemed like I had two jobs that I love to death and then the pandemic. Um, so, you, you know, I'm now I'm searching for jobs and, you know, and I'm have to contemplate, is this job going to be beneficial or detrimental? And that's not thinking about the money aspect, thinking about the stress and enjoyment aspect. At this age, and you know, you should be, you have to consider your happiness too. We, and I think that we've, for a long time that we've been teaching, just chase the dollar because the dollar is what makes you happy. Yes, money does bring you, um, gives you opportunity to get things that may make you happy, go places that may, uh, make you happy, experience different things and so on and so forth. But that day-to-day -day hustle of your job, is it really, is it being detrimental to your mind and your body and your spirit? You know, when also, when we think about creating the life that we want, we have to think about um, things like personality. For example, the movie, The New Guy, uh, starring uh, Dizzy Harris and Eddie Griffin back in the day. I think that was maybe mid, late 90s. It's a movie about a kid that was a, a total nerd at his previous school. He goes to a new school and has the opportunity to recreate himself. Um, if, for those that don't remember, make sure you check out that movie, The New Guy. And uh, basically, he totally changes his personality. Now, we're not saying change your personality. But one thing you might want to think about in creating the life you want is, like they always say, if you want certain things in life, if you want to get into a certain type of business, then you should start hanging around people that are into that business. You should start um, reading information on that type of business. You should go places that um, may have um, seminars, lectures that involve that type of business or a new career. Say you want to sell real estate. You should start going to the real estate conventions. You should start going to these open houses. Uh, you may want to call a real estate agent and see if they're hiring, see if they do any type of training. Uh, if you're in the music business, you want to make take a music seminar, you start going to these music seminars. If you're an artist, you want to start visiting as many museums as possible. Um, and, and with the way the technology is now, there are free art classes. You might want to uh, check in on free art classes, follow your favorite artists. They give lessons on Facebook because they've been at home bored during the pandemic. Um, if you're into wanting to, like we talked about earlier, be, um, generating other streams of income, say like for stocks and bonds, you should be watching videos on how to invest, buying books if you have the money to buy books or go to your library if you don't have the money to buy the books and start really trying to learn how to do um, stocks and savings and bonds and all that type of stuff. I like it. Those are very very excellent ideas um i hope that uh, you know our listeners you you wrote some of those down some of those were intriguing to you like hey you know he he's on to something here let me let me go check you know check into this check this out and then once you once you do that and you have figured out how to do it and you have figured out the ways to to create a better life for yourself you have a responsibility that if you have a youth or a teenager anywhere in your life, you have a responsibility to teach it to them. And the reason why you are given that responsibility is because you know what it's like. You've been here in this world. You've been in this life. And you certainly, if you can help it, would like to 
help our youth to avoid some of the pitfalls that you know we have had to face and that's not to say that our youth should not have to face adversity and things should just be easy for them just because but if there are ways that you can alleviate some of the burden of adulthood on a youth then you have a responsibility to do so so that we are turning out good responsible youth who don't wait till they're you know 60 or 70 to start living and then when you start living that's when it's time for you to die when you're 70 and 80 years old you're at the downswing of your life who wants to spend 70 years working in a position where you're not happy or you want to go chase money and because you're chasing money you're always too busy to enjoy that money you can't go on trips or vacations to enjoy the money that you spend so much time making because you have to keep hustling to make the money mm -hmm. so i saw a, um, a meme on facebook a couple of weeks ago and said can we normalize a nine to five job can we normalize getting eight hours of sleep can we normalize not having to hustle can we take the word hustle and chasing the bag out of our vocabulary and just work and live or just live and work so you're living and you're working but you're working so that you can live as opposed to just working to survive so that's the, the difference which is why you know i reworded the phrase you're either working to live or you're working to survive. And we have to get out of living in survival mode. It makes us angry. It makes us stressed. It keeps us tense and it's not good self-care. I don't care how many spa days you go and take. If you are always worried about the money you're spending because you took a spa day, then that's an issue, you know, and that that's an issue that we, need to work on we need to change we need to fix you should be able to go and and spend the money that you're making in a way that's not gonna have you having buyer's remorse when it's over you know yeah, if you take yourself definitely. out to lunch and get your nails done and then you go oh i feel bad i just spent that hundred dollars and i didn't need to we got to start doing something different yeah definitely i mean and also you have to balance that with um living above your means too uh, a lot of times we see so and so keeping up with the joneses the joneses got this the joneses got that so i have to have it and sometimes i may not quite be able to afford it but i'm gonna charge it up or i'm gonna stretch it to the limit like you said at that point you're putting yourself in survival mode because you have to go you have to hus hustle or go crazy hard to be able to make that payment on something that you, you know, that you not necessarily need. It's a want. And there's nothing wrong with having the things that you want. There's things that, you know, in this world that everybody should be able to have some things that they want. But the point of the matter is, are you stressing yourself to get that? Is this thing what really is going to make you happy because what i find that a lot of cases is that we've been taught that you have to have all this stuff and we work so hard to the point where we're deteriorating ourselves to get these things and then we've realized that we're still not happy so we go even harder to get more things and we're still not happy so that's why it's important to analyze what things really make you happy um we're going to be talking about it more on another show that we talked about doing um based on some uh thoughts that i had that we were talking about the um the happiness of poverty because a lot of times when i look back on life i find that the happiest times were times where I didn't have two cents to rub together because the money wasn't thing the thing that made me and my friends that I grew up with happy it was the camaraderie it was the sportsmanship in some cases we all were athletes um, it was the chilling 
we grew up in an era of the same time the hip hop was growing, which people don't realize the essence of hip hop is having everything from nothing. So that's something that we'll tackle even more down the line, you know, in a future show. But um, I, I think that that's something that we need to analyze is um, what do we really need to be happy? What really do you want that's going to make you happy? Is having a lot of things going to make you happy? You know, it goes back to where you said working to live or working to survive. What is living to you? Like I said, there's nothing wrong with having a lot of things going a lot of places because there's been a lot of um, research on that people are buying less physical material and spending more money on experiences. So if you're a person that I guess you have to really decide what type of person are you a physical or experience based person being. Is taking a lot of trips going to make you more, I won't say happy. Are you going to enjoy taking more trips than you would having possessing material things? That's something that you have to decide for yourself. Um, Some people love to travel the world and see different stuff. And some people that love to travel the world and see different stuff like seeing different things. Some people are just trying to clout chase. Some people travel the world specifically for spiritual experiences some people want to possess a lot of stuff to be the the man or the woman they want to be look at all this stuff I got and I acquired some people just have I don't want to use the word fetish Uh and admiration for particular things like say if you're um, into antique cars you know, it's not like you're getting those antique cars just to show them off. Yeah, you may go to car shows and stuff. It's because you have a, a complete admiration for that particular thing, antique cars or or whatever the case it may be. Um, whatever it is, you know, yard ornaments, antiques, period, paintings. Some people have a, 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 a an admiration for art and their admiration is so deep that nobody's probably going to see your art because it's probably in your home but you're just into that so you you have to decide what kind of person you are what things make you tick and those things will help you in creating the person you want to be I like it it so let's jump into the self care assignment that's what it's going to be get you a notebook Get a notebook and write down your dream job. Write down your dream vacation and write down your dream material thing that you want, whether it be a car, a wardrobe, a stamp collection. It doesn't matter what it is, what your dream possession is um, so that you, you know, you have career you know, you have vacation because we all got to relax and you have the material side of things. And then next to each one of those things, write down ways that you can get towards that goal. Set them as goals. Set your dream job as a goal. Set your dream vacation as a goal. Set your dream material item as a goal and write down what you're going to do to get those things. How that sound? I like it. That I, I was visualizing in my head as you were talking about like well, what what is my dream job? What is my my dream uh possession, you know, that I would like to own. So so I'm I'm definitely going to put that in my I have a journal that I keep my self care assignments in as I do them. So I definitely am going to to do that one. Uh, cuz I, I like that. I think that's a really good idea. Word up. That's your self-care sign. Dream job, dream vacation, dream possession. Write them down and write what you're going to do to achieve those goals. Even if you have to put up a vision board so that you can keep it in front of you, write what you're going to do to get those and, and work towards them every day. 
Word up. Now let's get into my favorite part of the show. Brain science, 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 science. All right. So we talked before um, many different times about the pleasure centers in your brain and how your brain gets dopamine when you achieve a goal, when you are applauded for achieving a goal, when someone else notices that you have achieved a goal. So this just further furthers our knowledge about the dopamine release in our brain when we achieve our personal goals. So this is how setting personal goals makes you a greater achiever. In other words, the more you achieve, the better it feels, the more dopamine your brain releases, the more you are going to want to achieve when it's over. So here are some ways to do it. Just like Pickett said, get specific. When it comes to setting your personal goals, honing in on its specifics is crucial for your for its success. It's common to have a broad idea of where you want or where you want to go and what you want to achieve, but this can sabotage your efforts in the long run if it's too broad. If you just say, I want to go to school, it's too broad. You want to go to school to learn to do what? And then once you go to school to learn how to do what, what are you going to do once you have learned this skill? See, you have to break it down as far as you can break it. And then you can put that goal into smaller pieces in order to achieve it. So next, identify the preparation that you're going to need to achieve your goal. For example, if your dream travel destination is to go to Africa, well, what are you going to do? What do you need to do? First, you need to get a passport. You need to get the money. You need to um, book with a reputable company to make sure you don't get swindled because you're going to be traveling internationally. Then you're going to want to get your vaccinations that are needed before you visit. You're going to check to see what vaccinations are needed for which part of the continent you intend to go to. See what I'm saying? So again, breaking that down all the way, getting specific so you can prepare to um, achieve set goal. Next, like I just said, break down each step into a manageable goal. Decide to make an appointment with your financial advisor. Ask what financial options will be available to you if you go into early retirement and you want to travel if that's what your goal is. If it is, you know, going back to school, you're going to need a financial advisor that's going to be able to help you map out your money. Can you afford to go to school right now? What school can you go to and spend less money and still get the same degree and the same level of education you would get at a more expensive institution? Then you want to set up a way to start making payments toward whatever that goal is. And again, a financial advisor can help you with that. They can say, well, hey, maybe instead of going out drinking with the girls every Friday, you go one Friday a month and then that other money you would have spent, that's what you're going to put up toward this goal, whatever that goal, you know, is. Then you're going to get started on your journey. You're going to create a goal planner which you can start writing down your next steps and that's where the magic happens. Once you see it on paper, your brain starts to put it together and says, if I can see it, I can do it, R. Kelly style. This is where the momentum towards your personal goals really starts. Create a schedule and start by writing, writing in it when you first start the first task and on which day you start it. Commit to completing a small task each day that is going to get you to the goal. Baby, step that thing out. Then you're going to create an annual review. So at the end of every year, be it a fiscal year, be it a calendar year or whatever you set forth, once a year, you're going to go into the same notebook that you're creating and you're writing down these goals and, and you're going to do a review. Did I hit this mark? If I didn't hit this mark, why didn't I? And what can I do to make sure I hit the mark the next time? If I did hit that mark, what's the next mark that I need to hit? What's the next important thing that I need to knock out on this list to get to this goal? So the bottom line is having personal goals gives you purpose and a feeling of becoming a better version of yourself. It's the smaller steps within the big goals that the growth and the achievement really lies. So keep going and always have the end goal in sight. Remember the why behind your life goals throughout your journey to keep you motivated and positive. Word up. I love that. Every bit of it. Every bit of it was dope. Every bit of it. And I think that that's um, something that we, we need to start teaching early. Because yes. a lot of cases, and even in my case back in the day, 
you get to your junior year, senior year, and you're still not sure what are the possibilities of the future. You know, I think that we've um, tried to keep our kids focused. One, you know, we knew he didn't want to go to college and he's still trying to find his way, um, which is kind of, you know, as a parent, it's hard because we know how smart he is. Um, and other one is ready to go when it's her time to go. You know, it's now it's just about a financial thing, but we know what the goal is. She knows what the goal is and where she wants to go. Now it's just about executing a plan, having a concrete plan and executing that plan. Yeah. Um, and I know I've talked to her in times like, hey, you know, you do art. You could use this as a side hustle, you know, because you have to think about little side hustles that aren't stressful things. It is essentially beneficial to you if you can have something that you love to do and are passionate about and make money off of while pursuing another thing that you want to do like college you have to go to college a lot of times depending on what you're going for it's not a lot of time to work but if you can have some type of side hustle to help you on a financial tip go for it like i said those multiple streams of income we need to uh, let kids know that this, think about this at, at an early age if we can get kids into stocks and bonds and and real estate and all these other things where they don't have to really work hard they can make money and focus on their education maybe we can start graduating college students that aren't in debt which i think that's the plan is that people are always in debt there are doctors that will die in debt. You know, there's are all types of people that are gonna die in debt. And you think you go to school all this time so that you can make decent money to make a dis decent living. Like I said, not just survive, but make a decent living. But it's a, and sometimes it's a trap, you know, but we gotta figure ways out the trap. We got to be the mouse getting the cheese strategizing we got to be the bird that learns how to use tools or the monkey that learns how to use tools and then we have to start early and early i say in the latest song of mine um we have too many athletes and not enough scientists oh. too many drug takers and not enough doctors and, and that's something that we have to work on so, yo, you know where to find us. Anywhere you find your favorite podcast, you can find us there, too. Fly With Us Podcast. We're on Facebook, IG, YouTube, everywhere, baby. Everywhere. everywhere. And, of course, if you'd like to be on the show or there's a topic you'd like to see us talk about, you can always hit us up on one of our social media outlets, or you can email us at flywithusla at gmail.com. I'm Lady Bounce. I'm your boy Picket Fence. We out. We out of here. Peace. Peace.